Today on Lulz, we have some new features in the Brick Draft Caddy for all of your underdog drafts. We'll get into that, show you how to do it. And on top of that, we will give the people ultimately what they want. Another puppy draft where you can see me victory lap my 0% David Montgomery exposure. I, does he think... I think he thinks this he thinks this is a go. Vegas Dave thinks this is a go. Hot naked girls doing yoga. What? Why don't you just win like a man? (laughs) Random.org. Type in one for yes, two for no, and let the DFS cats pick for you. And I'm absolutely begging you not to do (laughs) bus. Please don't do bus. Brian Hooper. How are you doing on this lovely Wednesday afternoon? Um, good. I think uh, I might be lagging now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you, but you have been just like a little little laggy. It's me, not you? Yeah, your audio seems good. Your video seems to lag just a smidge here. All right. Um, let's see here. Paul, can you force me into taking David Montgomery? Sure. If you let me get him, I don't know. Let's Let's make a deal at like pick 80. <sighs> Pick 80, I'll, I'll capitulate. It is I, I, it is funny that we get that today after the uh, the David Still Montgomery. Still haven't taken him, huh? Uh, I don't think so. You are really laggy for me right now. Yeah, it's it's me then, huh? Because I, I can't. Yeah, you're cutting, can't you're you cutting in and out tell. for me. Chat, let me know. All right. Can you guys hear us okay? All right, let me... Let me... Is it me or him? I think it's you, Brian. Okay. You want to try? You want to try to give us a restart? Yeah, give us a restart, Brian. I will check in with the chat here. Um, what do we have going on? Uh, yes, NFL appealing the Watson suspension. Uh, that's very, very interesting. Uh, because I did not think they were going to appeal it. I thought they were going to just let this one go as they always do. And what if, if Goodell is the ultimate arbiter on how that goes down? I mean, it seems like they're only appealing it (laughs) to get uh, a stronger suspension here. So that could be very interesting. Uh, Rondell Moore season because Marquise Brown got a speeding ticket. I think it's, I think it's Rondell Moore season, uh, regardless. Uh, it doesn't sound like anything's going to happen to Marquise Brown on a suspension front there. Um, let's see. Brick is laggy. Um, Twitch is fine for both. There you go. There you go. Brian, the Twitch head say Brian looks fine. Fix your site, Brian. Um, let's see. Give us a nice flex to flex on the Monty drafters. Yeah. Uh, exactly. I know I've been meaning to get around to drafting David Montgomery. Maybe now that he's, uh, the special teams report is out there. I will, uh, finally get a price on him that I feel, feel comfortable with. Uh, are you back, Brian? Oh no. It's doing I'm trying thing. to be back. Um, I'm going to let you keep, I'm going to keep talking to the chat. Yeah. It's lagging. T Vulture says, I'm new to BBM3 and have a question. Are it's Stafford and in... you're lagging? Yeah, you're lagging. Okay. Uh, um, T D Vulture says, I'm new to BBM3 and have a question. Are Stafford and Rogers enough at QB or do I need more? Um, yeah, I haven't done that pairing a ton, but I think both of those guys would be fine to do a two QB build. Uh there i think that's probably probably still in the sweet spot you can get away with two qbs there um brian how are we, how are we doing are we back oh no this isn't good this isn't good it's it was basically uh pat crane had his internet fixed and now it's whack-a-mole it's back to brian let's i'm trying a new a new a new connection here is this one working this is this seems better. This okay. seems better. It's something with StreamYard, I think, because it, oh, like you're it'll work. Try to throw StreamYard under the bus. Listen, I'm gonna kill their stock <laughs> in one fell swoop here if they even have if they're even public. But it's like works I, fine. I test yeah. it right before the show, and then as soon as the show starts, it fucks up. I wish I had stock in StreamYard. I feel like as as many hours of my life that I have spent on this product, um, I I feel like I should have some equity in the company. Yeah, it's like 
you drive 80% of their market share anyway. So <laughs> it is, it's funny too. Like the, the two, you know, the two things that basically helped me be able to go full time as a full time streamer was the pandemic and StreamYard. Like those were the two things because people might remember when we first did Lulz, this was before I had discovered StreamYard. We had, uh, someone you knew helping us produce the show via OBS. And then I found StreamYard like what a month after we had done like four or five shows. Yeah. And he wasn't too happy about us, you know, letting him go. I found <laughs> him on you know one of these higher sites Yeah, and he was a nice enough guy and everything, but yeah. like, like he, it's, it's, it's tough enough getting like two people on at the same time and getting everything ready and stuff like that. And then you have to get a third yeah. person in and it costs money. It's like, it wasn't free. And so we're, and like Pete found that StreamYard, it's like, oh my God, we have we have to do this immediately. Sorry, sorry, Tyler. And they just like immediately unfollowed us on Twitter. And it was nothing about you. You were doing a good job, sir. Uh, yeah. We were just uh, no, found a no frills way Taylor. to do this. But Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. That's but that's a throwback. That was that was KBO and League of Legends days of the pandemic. Yeah, he was putting up um, the live like the live scoring. Yeah. Do you remember that? Of like I do uh, remember that. G2 yeah. and stuff. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. Um, all right, Brian, let's get into it because we do want to have a little time to hop in a puppy draft, but you have added some new things to the brick draft caddy. You guys have seen us talk about it on some previous shows. You've obviously seen the overlay on my streams. We've talked about kind of the different, you know, types of information that you can load via CSV in there. But Brian, why don't you tell them about this newest version and then you can walk me through it because I haven't even fully explored all the new bells and whistles. All right. It's not tons of new stuff, but yeah. Um, the, Probably the main thing is you don't have to do a CSV for exposures now. Mm -hmm. You can see in that like bottom left hand panel Pete's got there. It's got like a little grab exposure button. Mm -hmm. So if you just go to your exposures page, which is under drafts completed, and then it doesn't matter what you pick, pick. But not that's how you would normally do is you export your CSV. But now you just click the exposures tab. No, up above okay. where, where uh, that right there. Yep. And then filter whatever you want. So you, for you, you'd probably want tournaments only. Um, yeah. And then best, you know, whatever. BBM three. What is the Pomeranian? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> that was that was a three dollar tournament they launched. That was that was like nearly rake free, and it filled extremely quickly. Um, <laughs> yeah. Let's let's just do Best Ball Mania three because that's right. And I then have most apply. Of my so this works for whatever tournament, any sport, whatever. And then you expand that. Click grab exposures. Um, and I just and, got a pop up uh, on my screen use, that people can't see that says auto exposure oh, captured. Okay. I was going to say on Mozilla, cause I'm using Mo Mozilla for mine. It says it captured and it just takes yep. a second. And then you just go back to your settings page on for the, for the HUD, for the HUD. Yep. Yeah. And then just select, and then it's got, it's got three data points in that exposures page. So you go best ball up in the top middle. Um, yep. there you go column three or two it doesn't matter it's in all of them but you select from one of those wherever you want yours gotcha oh you can't well that's right we can't see it when you're when you're oh sorry yeah you can't see yeah. you can't see it on my drop down but which one do i now select here so for my... nfl underdog exposures or gotcha. if you want to see your entry fees on a player nfl underdog entry fees and it'll show you like how much you've spent in that okay. tournament on that guy for we can't reason. see it but trust and then you have to, you so have I'm to not slip. seeing in the drop down. Oh, there it is, all the way at the bottom. Yeah, NFL underdog. Yeah. Uh, did you say price or ownership? Um, okay, you have the old, you had there's a newer version, but that, yeah, NFL underdog ownership. Yeah, it'll say NFL, okay. NFL underdog exposures now. Okay. And then the price is the one that shows you that's your how much you paid, ADP. but that says entry fees now. They didn't, they're not, you know. They're not best ball bros, so I have to tell them. No, actually, it's not ownership. <laughs> they usually say exposures and that. In DFS, they say ownership. But, um, yeah, and prices, entry fees. And so if you just go to whatever, rankings or or a live draft or a slow draft, then you should see, see the HUD working. And what about the one that you had added for SPAG showing your average ADP? A ADP, you still have to do the CSV. So, so that's with yeah. this down – download sample default 
if you click that download sample default schema, there's a bunch of Excels that I just yeah. mocked up that people can use. And you can put whatever the hell you want in there. doesn't matter. Okay. But eight people seem to like ADP. ADP is pretty fun uh, to look at and for streaming. I think for yeah. drafting, though, I would, I would not use it probably. I would rarely use it. Like I'd much rather have – um, you know some other things we have on there. We have Justin Herzig's, yeah, exposures. So that's his current exposures of who he's drafted. Uh, yeah. He also has his rankings on there too. Um, all this stuff is auto populating. Um, and I put um, what's it called, Pete? I can't see it on anything. Target exposures. Yeah. So this is how I draft right now. Is I took. Justin, Pete, Davis, Pat, I think that's everyone. Yeah. I took all of your guys' um, exposures and averaged them together and then regressed to the mean a little bit. And that's kind of the percentage I'm shooting for, or at least use your, you guys as a tiebreaker. Yeah. And I think regressing to the mean makes a lot of sense because like, you guys are probably ahead of the curve and you know, getting guys – earlier before whatever the general people kind of pick up on some, the steam. And mm -hmm. so it might not be like, you might not want to hammer, you know, whatever KJ Hamler at 25%, like Pete did because Pete was getting them at 220 or something. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. You'd almost, yeah, that makes a, that makes a lot of sense. Cause you don't want people grabbing it at a, at a bad price. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, and it's not like, you still want structure and correlation and all that jazz. But for me, I could see like, okay, these guys who are really paying attention and you could go and, and if you look at the rankings page, Pete, you could see it make, it might, uh, make where do I see sense. the rankings page on underdog? Oh, sorry. I had just bed head back to uh underdog here. Yeah. I, this is how I, uh, how I, or you can go to a live draft, whatever. Just go to, float your I'm boat. Just gonna... okay. So yeah, now I'm in, uh, a puppy so draft, got, and so that. Go ahead. You got, uh, yeah. You're drafting Debo at nineteen point six percent. Does that sound right? Yes, it yeah. does. And then the target, so for me, would be eleven percent. So if I was had Debo right here, like I might, you know, maybe I would pass on that, but oh, right. pending. Right. This so, is, so you this guys is, are like a little fun. under eight point. Sorry, I keep cutting you off, but like eight point three percent is like the over under right for anyone yeah. who's going to get drafted hundred percent of the time. So they, they're not in love with Mike Evans, right? They're like neutral with Andrews and Hill. You could kind of think of these things. Um, and, and, you know, they all have different opinions. Obviously it's an average who they like AJ Brown, T Higgins. And this can be, this can be a very yeah useful thing too. Like you said, it's just a gauge. Oh, these players are slightly above market on this guy. Oh, they're slightly below market. And you can just kind of use that as another data point. And it's also like a good sanity check. I've heard Justin Herzig say too, like when he's, you know, more than, you know, double, you know, more than 16% on a guy, he starts asking around, why am I so much higher on this guy than everyone else? So it can be kind of a fun thing to just, um, kind of check, you know, where you're at with some of these things. Yeah. Yeah. You could check Justin's, you could check the target one, you can check your own. Um, and it doesn't flicker anymore. That was annoying for me. I don't know how. So like it was, it's kind of a give and take on that. You could switch between the, the, the different thing, you know, you could pick week seven, 16 or week 17 and switch between them. But the flickering was, it was pulling in API data. Yeah. You know, like every two second or two, but like, I'd rather, you know, we don't really switch it that much. So I'd rather have it like stagnant like this where it doesn't flicker, but then you have to go back and it'll refresh the page. It's not the end of the world, but if people don't like things like that, we can always, we can always edit it. Yeah. Um, so the TLDR now is if you just want to use some of those default things and get your exposures, you don't have to deal with a CSV at all. I didn't deal with a CSV on this. If you do want to get a little bit more in the weeds, like having your average ADP, you can use some of those default CSVs and then select the use CSV from, from the dropdown. Exactly. That is the TLDRs. Just go to the exposures page and then kick that, click that, uh, grab exposures, which is yeah. what most people want. The ADP is like, it's a little harder to like grab that, that data. So you do still have to use the CSV for that. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe someday we'll, we'll add that. 
I think there's other cool things we're trying to add that take precedence. We'll, we'll, we'll let you know, have those hope. I mean, some really cool stuff too. So hopefully they can figure that out. But um, for now, we're just kind of doing this stuff and then we get DraftKings working too. Oh, and it works too with drafters too. So like drafters, their page is, I think just ownership. And it's the same thing. Just migrate to their ownership page and click grab exposures and mm -hmm. then go to the drop down and select uh, drafters ownership. Yeah. Um, All right. We're going to get, uh, if, if our, I'm going to get my Eckler exposure up here, uh, a smidge granted, this is BBM three and we're in puppy three here, but, uh, I'm curious. I think I might've missed this. Any chance Brian could touch more on the back Justin. and forth him and Justin had on Twitter on exposure. I, I think I missed this conversation. So you're talking Justin Freeman, I'm assuming. It's not hers, hers if we didn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, he must be in uh, Freeman. Justin. Yeah, Freeman. Um, yeah, I honestly, I'm not remembering it. I think it was more GTO than exposures, right? Should I look that up? Um, yeah, you can. I, I don't remember the, the conversation, so you, you, you would I. have me, to do it. Let me grab it. People um, want to know about getting DK exposures. Yeah. So th like from what I looked at, DK doesn't have like a CSV export, right? I, yeah, I, that you're, I'm out of my depth with. Okay. You're with out of your depth. DK. I was hoping somebody, somebody in chat, tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I don't think they have a CSV export and I don't think they have like an exposures page like DraftKings or I'm sorry, like drafters or underdog. Mm -hmm. So like the only other way is to like go line by line through your, through the, uh, all the things you drafted um, which maybe that's what we'll have to do eventually, but I don't know. It seems like a pain in the ass. But we do have some cool stuff for DraftKings in the works. I don't know if the, they can pull it off, but uh, there should be some DraftKings stuff in the future. There you go. Um, yeah, Denden Den says um, he was talking about balance exposures. I've been going out of my way to go more balanced, but he seemed to push back on that on that strat. We're st we're back to Justin again. Yeah, I thought you were trying to dig up that combo. I, I am. This is like how boomer I am right now. <laughs> I, I, I must have went on a tweet rampage lately. Normally I can find stuff pretty easily. My tweet my tweet number, here it is. My tweet numbers are getting <laughs> they're getting up there, Pete. Wow. Oh, I just 5, realized. 5,500 tweets. How many? 5,500. Oh, I, I think that's rookie numbers in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, I guess, but I haven't really been doing it for more than like two years now. Least... I'm on the low side compared to some people. I mean, I, I would shudder to see what Davis's total tweets. tweets yeah, you are. don't you don't tweet that much. Uh, uh I don't like okay. I, I sent you the Twitter uh, thread. I don't know if we have time to go through it and draft, but no, we can. We can go, okay. but I would I would just pull some nuggets out from there and and discuss it here, and we can leave the draft board up. Okay, and one another thing too with the exposures, the grab exposures. Mm -hmm. Underdog has different names for the same players in different spots. Really? So like we're gonna have to like code that out. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I think like Robbie Anderson is like one with a Y and one with an IE. With an IE, yeah, because he I just think. officially changed his name. DK Metcalf, so I, think I think that's too. why. Because it makes sense with the Robbie Anderson because they use like the official whatever um data for the names and then he publicly changed his name so i'm guessing those stat sites updated I, okay yeah but i mean you'd figure on the same site they'd have one name yeah but they don't so if those numbers are blank 99 mm -hmm. percent of the time you just didn't draft that guy yet in that tournament it depends on how much you filter down because like if you don't filter any of them then it's going to have all your exposures, which you might want. You might want to balance your portfolio across multiple tournaments. I don't know. But if you filter it down to like, what's the new one? Puppy two. Pete Puppy probably three. doesn't have a ton of drafts yet. And he's probably gonna be no. plenty of guys. He hasn't drafted it. Just, so it'll just be blank. Right. Except for maybe those few, two names I just mentioned, Robbie Anderson and D DK Metcalf, but yeah, we'll get, we'll get those changed. It's just interesting that they don't have the same name yeah. across the site. What do you, okay. what do you think about like your portfolio across contests? Like obviously right now I have my yeah. BBM three exposures, like using that to maybe leverage in a different contest. I mean, one of the things with like DFS is if you, 
if you play, let's say you play 500 bucks in just like kind of the, you know, low, medium stakes, big one that happens every night. And then yeah. one 500 into the high stakes one, mm-hmm. like your EV is like half of it is in the high stakes one, right? Even though you're going to have whatever that is, uh, you know, 50 lineups or something into the cheaper one, your EV is mainly going to be driven by that high stakes one because it'll be a lot smaller because you're playing heavier competition and right. you only have one entry, right? So like, even though you have multiple entries in the other one, it's not like, Oh, this lineup has this much EV. This it's, it's the portfolio as a whole. And so like entering that high one drags down your EV. I mean, you might still want to do it if you're good, especially, but like, drags down your total ev so like let's say you're like 15 percent edge in the small one and a two percent edge in the big one well now you know you're at seven percent or whatever overall Mm -hmm. so like i don't think you could do it i'm not sure what you could do about it in um uh uh, a draft style best ball right because you like you kind of just take your you have to take what you're given because you can't make your own teams yeah. Um, but like I would, you know, if you enter a couple expensive ones, which I'm, I'm assuming they're going to pump out closer to the season, you know, that is a big part of your EV is going to be f- coming from, from those tougher competitions. And cause they're right. A big share of your buy-in. Yeah. And I mean, the, I mean, the one thing I think about with, you know, there's a few news things that, you know, I've been percolating that when I draft the rest of my best ball mania three teams, you know, at the end of August might not be available anymore. You know, guys like, Hey, Will Fuller, you know, what if he gets the Julio bump after signing, you know, the guy Dearness Johnson, I've been taking a lot of, um, some of these rookie wide receivers who continue to get a ton of buzz and like really trying to lean into where I think there's kind of an information disparity right now or where the ADP hasn't caught up or could potentially really get shooken up and like really prioritize that within this puppy three and then, you know, circle back um, just as a way to take advantage of this unique drafting window in time. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that, that's another thing why it's so hard to do it in this because you get Julio Jones at 190 on average and then now you're not going to take him in BBM three or as much, and right. but you're going to take him at well, I don't know whatever whatever he's going now ninety or there. whatever. Yeah. And and now there's just like it's like so what is what does that do for your overall portfolio? It's like you have yeah. no choice really if you're trying to play good strategy. To and I mean you want to pivot. You want to talk about a wild ADP roller coaster. I mean, we were talking while you were doing your thing about the league appealing this Deshaun Watson thing. So it went from his ADP was all over the map in BBM three. The like news came out right as puppy three opened that he only had a six game suspension. So then he rocketed up draft boards. And now Schefter and all the insiders are saying they're seeking a full year suspension, which is going to torpedo his ADP once again like I don't even know how actionable that is for drafting just knowing how over all over the place it's been yeah it's great it's I mean that's kind of the the market price that in pretty good man like how he, he's been like right about probably where he should be with all this right right 180 190 200 for a little while maybe and then drop down but nothing nothing where he rightfully should be you know based on talent anyways right Oh, all what do you right. got what am I... So as you can see, I normally take, I have a ton of Brees Hall. Um, I think I'm going to balance it here. You know what? No, let's just take Herbert. We, we have Keenan, we have Eckler. Um, we're making a big bet on the Chargers. So I'll just, I'll just lock up that stack. So, yeah. So the target was five. So you guys aren't huge on Herbert and it kind of makes some sense too, actually. And I know, Herzig, I think, hasn't taken him once yet. I heard him say that, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. driving and, down that average, but... In the times I have taken Herbert and BBM3 have mainly been in the fifth when he slides. You know, obviously, if there is a time to take him at ADP, it's when I've already made a pretty big investment in the Chargers with with Eckler and Keenan. I mean, I get, I get it. Like, he's pretty easy to stack up. So... When you do pick them, you're getting, there's going to be a lot of combos of him and Allen, him and Wilson, et cetera, et cetera. So, yeah, 
Yeah, this is one, I think you could say it's similar to this Diggs one right here. So you see Dickey from the nine hole, Diggs, Josh Allen in the third, and then he, he passed on Gabe Davis, but he could do Gabe Davis here, where it's like not only are the players correlated on the same team, but their ADPs have been correlated. So it's probably a pretty replicated combo. I agree with you. I probably am fairly replicated here with an Eckler, Keenan, Herbert uh, combo in that range. Yeah, I mean, but it's that's still fucking nice, <laughs> especially yeah. with Eckler as your are is the guy. What? How many catches did he have last year? Eighty. He had a ton. Yeah, yeah, he had a ton. Um. So yeah, I'm. I generally try to shy away from that. There, I just didn't love my other options. I guess I could have taken another share of Brees. I could have done a week seventeen bring back with Cam Akers. Um. But because I just don't have a whole lot of Herbert, and it's like. I don't, yeah. I don't know what else I'm going to take of a, outside of a Eckler Keenan start. I, I I would just take him. Yeah. I mean, unless like you know for sure, like that that those combo amounts are like going to be super negative EV, EV for you. Yeah. Like I I, I I I think a lot of this stuff. I watch more be- best ball content. To me, it's a lot of just astrology. Like this is just like you you're connecting dots that don't really exist. That you get, you can't prove, you know, mm-hmm. if you're invading a player. You, I mean, there's some logic to it, but you don't know. So yeah, David Montgomery, you have his blank there, but that's right. You haven't taken him yet. Yeah, I have it. Um, yeah, you're still not going <laughs> to. No. And I passed on, on cooks to take Bateman here. This is a, this is a spot too, where I know a lot of people don't like to take two players from the same team unstacked, but like, I have no problem building out a bet on the Ravens, even though I don't have Lamar. Um, You know, the bet I'm making is that Herbert is going to be the league winning quarterback, putting up those monster scores. And I can still get access to another elite offense through their top two pass catchers there. And uh, I would just prefer to bet on the second year breakout as opposed to the wide receiver who came in the league in 2014. Did you see that David Montgomery is getting special teams touches, Pete? Did you see I, did that? Did you see my report that he's uh, they've having him sell hot dogs as well, concessions at uh, at training camp. He's, do you he's, get that he's money? Do you draft him? Do you get a piece of that? <laughs> you should. You should. Um, maybe you know it is funny too because you think I would have a share or two in my best ball breakfast streams when all the badge brigade bros are in the draft and they're not taking David Montgomery and then I you know I'm forced to take him, but he does. He just doesn't slip. Maybe this will be the draft. Like I said to Paul, I said I said at pick 80, if David Montgomery comes to me at 78, it is my promise to you into the chat, I will take David Montgomery at pick 78. Wait, are you doing two two drafts? <laughs> no. Oh, because that looks like that. it's kind of uh, – oh, it's Bateman. I didn't see the player, but it's – the numbers on the left side look kind of squished to me, and it looked like a one kind of at five or whatever that is. Yeah. It's like not the clearest. I'm like, did he do a two light? This guy's a maniac. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like that would be like a Davis move. Like he's streaming one draft, but so bored with just streaming and doing one draft that he gets it another. I just had I was thinking about that yesterday. I I was like, I bet when he would do the take cast, he's fucking drafting. I bet he's not even listening to me. <laughs> he's in the background. Wouldn't would it doubt would it doubt he is multitasking? I it, I'm just not as good at mul- the times I do it, like I I then have to follow up. Wait, what did you say? Like, I just, uh, if I'm not fully present, then uh, then I miss stuff. Okay. Do we want to do this Freeman tweet, Justin tweet? Yeah, go for it. Justin said, I stand in vehement opposition to balanced best ball strategies. Do you have any thoughts on that or you want me to continue? No, continue. And then uh, our buddy Davis says, what does that even mean? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Justin says, I think assuming every ADP is equally valid as a leak, I think you're better off aiming for 25% or 0% of every player. You only get 150 entries. That 8% exposure only gets you so far in raw N of lineups, like raw sample of lineups. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I said, balanced game theory play isn't synonymous with the efficient market hypothesis hypothesis mm-hmm. um and i think that's the thread that was asked about yeah 
So yeah, like um, I don't. Know, I think it's pretty. Did I talk about it anymore? Yeah, and so I said balanced means just playing unexploitably. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's in best ball or poker or whatever. I don't know what that perfect strategy would be for best ball. I'm sure it's minimal because you're doing a draft, like or minimized. Um, and so, so like here, here's another example of GTO. It's just playing unexploitably. It doesn't mean. So like, let's say you have the nuts on the river in poker, mm-hmm. and someone bets into you. You're never folding, right? Correct. And I can't imagine you're ever calling. So you're a hundred percent of the time you're raising. Mm-hmm. So like it GTO strategy isn't like directly in disagreement with taking, I don't know, name, name, uh, uh, Hamler taking KJ Hamler 80% of the time. Mm-hmm. Right. That might be the GTO strategy. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean you take KJ Hamler 8.3% of the time. Yeah. So, and, and just like generally speaking, the efficient market hypothesis, you know, that the stock market is, you know, efficient enough and is always going up. So you should invest in mutual mm-hmm. funds or indexes, et cetera, et cetera, right? That whole idea. And the best ball market is fairly sh- sharp, right? Because people are spending money and voicing their opinion that way. And it, it, it is sharp. I mean, there's no way. This is a lot of good info. There's a lot of good information in the ADP. No one can deny that. Are we, are we up yet? No. No one can deny that, right? So Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you don't know more than the market. I, I said this on the last show. Someone in our... Our Lowell's Discord was was arguing with me about something that like beliefs I don't hold. And like usually I'm just like, listen, we're talking past each other. Sorry. Like, go watch the show again. Like, uh, I I'm not saying ADP is GT drafting ADP is GTO at all. And I think I think one of the mixed up things was last show or a couple, I can't remember anymore, a couple shows ago. Like for me. I'm going to stick around 8% because I don't know anything and I don't watch the off-season news. I hate ESPN, all that shit. I don't watch it anymore. So I don't know what's going on. The only information I get is from Twitter and from like Pete and watching his shows and stuff. Like that's basically it. So for me, it's best to not steer too far off 8.3%. And I now I have like their exposures and stuff. It's kind of like cheating. So I go up and break tiebreakers based on their information because they they are paying attention. I'm not saying that's GTO. Well, the other thing about that that conversation is, and it kind of goes back to the thing I was saying, where if ADP moves or news moves things, like I could have a stretch in Best Ball Mania three where I draft the same guy. Let's say Dearness Johnson because I think he might get traded or cut or whatever. I could draft him like 20 straight drafts in a row. And my exposure would be very high for at that total amount of drafts I've done. And then the shoe drops, he gets traded. And then I don't take him again, the rest of best ball mania three and my exposure actually ends up coming closer down to the average. It's just, I've gotten him at a much better price. And so I think that's the thing where people are misunderstanding the, your GTO thing of saying like, you can't have player takes or something like, even though it might actually come down to me having 8.3% of a guy I was hammering during a specific period of drafts. Right. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, just to be clear, like I'm not saying ADP (laughs) drafting by ADP only is GTO Mm -hmm. or staying with your exposure, with your portfolios, trying to keep it at 8.3%. I do think GTO is more of those strategies we talked about, whatever, to, to some shows ago. Uh, it was our portfolio theory episode. Pete, I think Pete mm-hmm. labeled it something like that, where like if you have 20% of Dalvin Cook, you should, you should in other drafts, kind of – take Madison in a decent amount of them like that, especially if you only have like 2% and you're under eight, 8.3%. Like you probably actually want to have him. If you took like 20 some percent cook, you probably want to get that up to like, I don't know, 12% over eight of Madison. So like when one does 
lineup does bad, the other one goes up and your EV is relatively the same, assuming ADP is relatively sharp, which it is, right? Or you know what yeah. the fuck you're doing and you know more than the field. You know, you still – you might want to, to make that move. Like right. another – like a GTO example in poker would be like sometimes something – like let's say you get two cards, it's your turn. Like 70% of the time you raise, you know, 20% of the time you call, and 10% of the time you fold. Like you do these mixed strategies. And like that's why like Doug Polk, when you watch him play online, he's got that little timer next to his name because that's how he's mixing up his strategies. He like just clicks this little timer. It goes zero to 100. And if it's like, you know, under 70, he raises. If it's between 70 and 90, he calls. If it's 91 to 100, he folds, right? Like he's just using that to randomize his play so that his opponent can't exploit him. And he's just right. trying his best to, to be unexploitable. It's kind of tough to do that in best ball, but I, I did have one thought on it where, besides that portfolio idea, where uh, Davis gave me this idea kind of. He said on uh, – whose stream did he do? Fuck. Was it Justin's or Liam's? One of the two of them. No, Justin's. He did Justin's, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't keep track of all these. Sorry, I'm still you, you tilting keep drafting. There. I'll talk. <laughs> no, no, I got sniped and I was tilting there for a half second. <laughs> what um, happened? I, I put I, MBS in the queue and he went. Um, and so now we do not like this. Did you sneak of, uh, this? Uh, did you sneak this draft or did you announce you were going to do it when I was? No, I telegraphed it. I tell. I see Harbs and we got the we got the badge brigade in here. Snipers. Uh, Lewis says something, it was something Davis said yesterday. So what was it? Liam, was he on Liam's stream? Um, he said he, um, if you're going to draft Taylor, Fred Taylor, he thinks you should just like go to random.org and, and then, you know, go 50, 50 between McCaffrey and Taylor. Mm -hmm. Now leaving that nonsense aside, <laughs> the Davis, the Davis take there, um, the way the way you would do something like that is so like let's let's just say you don't have a hot take there you just kind of want to mix up your your structure yeah you could do something you could use like random.org but it wouldn't be like 50-50 right because taylor's going to get drafted earlier on average more we know that you'd right? want it weighted yeah so you want exactly so like if you would look at it like because you're only going to get, unless you're Pete, you're only going to get 1.1, 8.3% of the time, right? Yeah. And you're going to get the 1.2, 8.3% of the time, et cetera, et cetera, unless you run somehow extremely hot. So, but just assume you have 8.3%. So, like, you could probably write it out in Excel pretty easy. And, like, okay, I know. So, like, when you get the 1.1, I'm just guessing here, it would be, like, yeah. you take Taylor 80% of the time. Mm -hmm. And then the other 20% you take McCaffrey just making up numbers kind of, but something like that. And mm -hmm. so then you could go to random.org, click it and then let it pick for you. And then it would be progressively, probably progressively drop from there or actually vice versa. You know, you'd probably, if Taylor gets, keeps going, you actually are way more likely to take him there as well, but you would use that sort of mixed strategy there to balance out that you would get, some McCaffrey and your one dot ones because right because even though you know you're only going to get one 8.3 percent of the time Taylor has I've seen him fall to five like yeah. it does no happen. for sure so like it's just a small percentage of the time yeah so just like some percentage of the time you want to mix it up so your your um structure is unique like if that's something you wanted to achieve but you you want to do it you know, with, with some sort of math backing you up. Cause otherwise you're just gonna, you're just gonna get a shit ton less of Taylor. Right. And the other thing too, is I, and I'm, I'm definitely willing to try to galaxy brain some combos in the first couple of rounds that I think might be unique, but in some of those spots, like I've kind of really start, especially with the top five and six guys been drafting it almost exclusively off of ADP, knowing even if I reach because I prefer Justin Jefferson to whatever, let's say Jonathan Taylor, like those combos I'm getting in the second round because the ADP is like relatively fluid within a three to four pick band, like everyone's going to have that same combo anyways. So I'm not even accomplishing anything unique by taking 
you know, my guy, other than boosting my individual Justin Jefferson exposure over JT, which is a separate discussion, but there's almost no unique benefits of, you know, reaching either. Yeah. I think where the unique benefits are, are some players that are more like have been hovering at the one, two range and then hovering at the two, two, three, like Travis Kelsey is routinely going in this pocket and T Higgins is routinely going in this pocket. So like, as we get closer to the season, I definitely be willing because I think T Higgins has it in him to have a top five wide receiver season. I wouldn't mind doing a Kelsey Higgins pairing, knowing that most people drafting off of ADP are never going to get that pair. Yeah. And I, I honestly haven't put a ton of thought into it. It might not be something you don't even, you might not even want to do it, but if you were going to do it, it's especially with those earlier picks, you you, you need to, you know, uh, plan it out a little, plan it out a little on how you're going to approach that. I think it's like, if you did, uh, you, you're actually going to get sniped again, aren't you? I, I was flirting with the devil. I was like, will he do it again here to me? Now, now setting up my, my giants here. Is, um, is Jones still like locked in as starter? I saw some like report of a couple really? weeks ago. That bullshit. Oh, I missed that one. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. Eat. I don't. Who the fuck is even the backup quarterback in New York? I don't. Oh know. no, I think it was like they were gonna sign. Maybe it might have even been Baker, Baker Mayfield or something. Who knows? Back oh, then. okay. I, I can't remember. Rod Taylor. Oh, forgot he uh, had landed there. Ah. Yeah, no, it's it's GG. Oh yeah, he's, if, he, uh, It feels like Rod Taylor's gonna get a start this year. He no, always get gets out of one. Uh, Here's the astrology you're talking about. Here's the astrology. You can always ask the the chat has Tyrod. Congrats, guys. You guys passed today's backup QB quiz. (laughs) Holy cow. Get we get it. You're you guys are football nerds. You know football more than us. (laughs) (sighs) Um with the with the strategy. Oh, are you gonna say something? No, no. Go for it. With the 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 uh, random strategy too, like we kind of have kind of have it with just like the tiebreaker idea, you know, like week sixteen, week seventeen, maybe looking at the target exposures, balancing your portfolio. Like there's so many tiebreakers, anyways. Like right, you should get pretty unique. And at a certain point here, like we're we, we're doing a draft, we're not doing DFS. Like mm. just you know, play the best plays. Yeah, I don't. I mean, it, that's what it would be a whole different. If we had real time ownership data and like the the most frequented combos, imagine if you were able to see real time data on that. Like with the FFPC, like in these main event drafts, they there's a real t- uh, a real time API feed on the drafts, and we can go in and look. Hey, we're the only team so far to have taken Kyle Pitts, AJ Brown, and Darren Waller together. That's a real thing we were able to look up for one of our main event drafts. Like that mm. would certainly change some of the calculus uh, here, depending on on that. Um, let's see. What do I want to do here? What do I want to do here? Maybe we'll just super stack uh, Herbert here. Yeah, because I want your next pick. Yeah, it, it was going to be, yeah, he's p- ADP. My next pick's at 139, and a wide receiver is not slipping past ADP in this room. I have a, I have a noob under, uh, underdog question. Okay. How do you get it back to the scrolling where it scrolls with the pick? I always lose it, and then I have to scroll back up. Oh, that like, part. I want it to I stay there and then, yeah. Move accordingly. I think if you get it out of frame, you then just have to get it back in frame. If the current no. pick is out of frame, I think it sticks. And if you get it back in frame, I believe it moves. That didn't, that didn't, mm, I don't didn't think work that for does you? it. Yeah. Uh, um, this is a fun that. question. And again, it goes back to the whole how much is correlation worth. But as a thought experiment, Omar asked, how many picks past ADP would each pick have to fall for you to have a completely uncorrelated team? Like if every first round pick kept falling and I just kept getting another first round pick over and over, I would not care about correlation. I would draft CMC and then I would draft Justin Jefferson and then I would draft Cooper Cup. But he's obviously a- asking where is the break even point on that? Yeah. yeah. Hey. I wish I knew (laughs) we've been, that's a question we'd like, we'd like answered. You could, it would, you could find out through a SIM. You could find out pretty fucking close through a SIM. 
uh, I'm just too busy to to do it, and best ball is not my main thing. So I'm sure someone's working on it. But yeah. yeah, you should be able to answer that. Like between rounds one and five, it's only worth whatever four picks. Yeah, six to ten, it's worth ten. What I don't know. It's gonna be uh, you're gonna find a rule of thumb there that people will have. Um, you probably whatever you guys if you guys sat down and had a little round table and wrote it out, I bet you'd be pretty close anyways. If you guys guessed, like how many like picks? Just using some specific examples of like use a some specific versus. examples. Break Looking at even just projected bit. projected points too to just see how many sacrifice how many projected points you're sacrificing. Yeah, I bet intuitively you guys could get there pretty pretty quick. Pretty, yeah. or, or I should say close enough. Right. I I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. I don't know. It's uh, it's like pornography. You know, when I see it, I know it. You know, that's that's kind of that's my answer. <laughs> The uh, I I still also think there's like something with season long that's different than DFS because like you get that correlation every week. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, I you kind of do in DFS too because you could just pick new correlation the next week. But um, this is a this is a fun question from Paul for you, Brian, because you are drafting largely off of these, you know, target exposures and stuff like that. How, what kind of structures have you been ending up with? Paul says, are you mainly playing correlation and exposures versus structure? Yeah, I, I, I literally just go, I put, like I said, I put my exposures, those target exposures with these guys. And what's the third one? Uh, sometimes I put like Justin's in there or, um, I switch up the third one week 17 because like, I don't have it all memorized mm -hmm. like Pete does and then use that as a tiebreaker. Um, on drafters, I put the underdog ADP, the updated underdog ADP on there because oh, that's a good the, idea. Yeah, that's on ours too. So like the underdog ADP is you can overlay it right on drafters and then there's like 20, 30 gap differences a lot of times in ADP. Uh, and I just, just pick that. And so like whatever I get, I get, you know, just constantly trying to stack or double stack within reason. Yeah. And it, and it seems like there's what I, I let whatever, like if I get Taylor, like I'm less likely to take another running back. Yeah. Uh, Cause I got the stud guy. So I kind of just like let the draft uh, go for me and I don't do not uh, consciously force zero RB or whatever the, all those things mean. Um, and sometimes I wait on QB if that's what's happening. And like everyone has a QB already, I'll take some risks. So you see Robbie Anderson's not, not highlighting like, yeah, because of the, he changes IE name. Yeah. To the, he changed from the Y to the IE. Um, yeah, it's interesting too. Cause then like, you know, I do think in a room like this, you might like, I, I was drafting these wide receivers ahead of ADP Boyd, Kenny Galladay, Palmer, just because this room is is sucking them out more than usual. So I was like reacting to this very unique room. Whereas I barely, I think if we looked at my average ADP on these guys, it would not be uh, ahead of it otherwise. Um, We're gonna have to see. update that Tim Patrick. <laughs> Do not draft him. I know. I know, man. You guys were under. It looked like, oh, oh no, that you guys might, were about average with the field collectively. That might be too much. Should I do one more running back here? I guess we could do. Ugh, I don't like this spot. Uh, I would actually, I'm, take I'm just going to get another. Well, so I was debating this here of like, what is what is too much chargers? Justin Herbert, Eckler, Keenan, Palmer. It's one of those things where, the way I think about it is it's probably fine for, you know, getting to the playoffs, winning even our 12 man league, just making this big bet on the team. But I just think it would really hurt me in week 17 trying to hit. I mean, I need the chargers to score like 50 points. That's a good point. That's a good point. Cause I was going to say, yeah, but like you got set, you got set or 14 weeks because he could throw two to Evans or Everett. And then next week he throws two to Eckler and then next week, like, right. I, and, I would and say the, the, 
the um, the finals is like 400 players. How many people? This one, I should know the puppy two rules here. I'm pulling it up. I don't have it on the uh, the screen here. The finals for this one is uh, why can't I see this? A 230 person group. Uh, round four will consist of a 230 entries in a single 230 person group. Th that's small enough where I would I don't I wouldn't care. That's fine. I'd take ever. Even in 230. So I guess that would be like yeah, in a small field. But the problem is, is would you in a DFS tournament that same weeks 15, week 16, week 17 run out the same super stack of the same team? Well. I would if I could pick my highest scores from all the players, maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is a big difference. Yeah. I, I, I probably wouldn't super stack in a 200 or 300 man GPP and DFS. Um, yeah. It's not, I don't think it's the end of the world, though. The other nice thing about some of these spots here, and you can see if someone takes Everett, is sometimes when you are on the fence about it or feeling weird, it's like, let him slip around. You know, and now all of a sudden we're even getting if like I'll I'll take him here for sure if if yeah. he falls to me and then it's like all right we snuck in an extra high upside you know rookie wide receiver here I needed more wide receivers so that's not that's not too bad. Can you uh, highlight Paul's someone someone's gonna time out and take Pitt, Tim Patrick you know so yeah you're trying to balance exposures in it and you don't like your team sometimes so like just kind of to to be like more clear on that I'm saying like balance you know, within reason, you know, you don't have to force balance. So like a tiebreaker. So like, let's say like t uh, Van Jefferson, he's Pete's under on Van Jefferson a little bit. If he had the same with him and the guy next to him, who's got a ton more and he's just a tiebreaker, you know, then it doesn't change anything more. The balance like GTO stuff, like was specific players. So like handcuffs specific. Seriously, Rish? Why? Did he just take? <sighs> he just Daniel took. Jones he just thing? took an unstacked Daniel Jones to snipe my double stack. What are you doing, Rish? He Reesh? got you twice. You cuck. <laughs> What'd you call him? Call him a cuck. <laughs> I mean, I didn't think I had to worry about that. Jesus Christ! <sighs> what is going on here? <laughs> The more upset you get, the more they're going to do it to you, Pete. Well, it's just, it's just, you know, when you took MBS, it was fine because, you know, wide receivers are flying off the board. There's just no reason for you to take Daniel Jones here. Uh, I, I shouldn't have brought him up. I shouldn't have brought him up. I'm till, like, what? I'm trying to see here. Do we have any justification for Daniel Jones? I mean, this is fucking absurd. Sit back, grab it, go a three QB build with Baker in Wentz or Davis Mills or Jared Goff or Ryan Tano. You had a fucking entire room full of late round quarterback options to stack with. God. Reesh. That was personal. Reveal yourself. That was personal. I'm tilting. And then I'll relax I'll, now. I'm back. We're back. We're fine. I just had a okay. little moment there. Okay. All right. I was getting nervous. <laughs> Ricky blessing. He just heard me talking about how I don't mind taking two pass catchers unstacked. And he said, all right, Peter, we'll see how, <laughs> how much you truly believe that. <laughs> oh, God. I guess it shows you how much EV there is in these things. People would rather, <laughs> you know, tilt you up than pick the best play. And why I'm going in on Reesh, I don't know if he's watching this, but he's been using the full clock on every single pick. So he's trying to uh, elongate this draft for no reason, snipe me for no reason, drafting a shit team. <sighs> you know, it's get, you, get you a stream that could go from GTO balanced exposure talk to just pure raw unfiltered <laughs> tilt on something that's ultimately meaningless. <laughs> I didn't think it was possible to tilt in best ball, but uh, apparently it is. It's possible. Oh, no, I'm I'm tilting. If you take Tim uh, Patrick here, I'm going to say tilt. I'm going to take Jameis Winston 20 picks past ADP. I'm just going to do it. All right. Thank you, Denden. 
clown behavior from Reese. I could not agree more. Could not agree more. Watch Reese here. Bleed the whole clock. He'll just bleed it for no reason. I and he's not he's not auto drafting because he wouldn't he'd get Tim Patrick if he was. Yeah, you're right. Hmm. hmm. This guy doesn't like you. He doesn't. He doesn't like. You. I know he's listening too. I know he's watching. The feelings mutual. Hmm. Okay, maybe he, the he, full on donkey boy. Now we're three tight end build full on donkey boy. Here's the thing, chat. Who am I stacking up with Jameis Winston? And don't you dare say Taysom Hill. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, There is like, there's nothing fun late to stack with the Saints. Unless someone wants to try to sell me on, yeah, Mark, I'm, Mark Ingram, uh, Mark Troutman. Come on. I need a wide receiver. Okay, Deontay Hardy. What about, I mean, yeah, what, well, they have a bunch of sh- like shitty wide receivers, right? Uh, yeah. So there's the Ingram, there's the Taysom Hill, there's the Troutman, but I don't want, I, I want wide receivers. So it's Callaway, Hardy, Traquan Smith, just a murderer's row of shit. Yeah, Traquan shit Smith and. One. We don't, we don't even have those guys ranked in our. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know you could filter by, by team like that. You didn't it's know really that? Good. I didn't know last that. Week, last week, we showed people how to create private leagues on Underdog. This week, yeah. we show you how you can search for Denver this by typing great. DN in the chat. Now I can just, after, I, yeah, I could just highlight my guys really quick, put them over in the queue. But sometimes, you know, sometimes you type in Den and you get Hayden Hurst, right. you know, showing up there. So that is. Uh, an issue you're a big fan of den <laughs> den kc den kc um all right how am i gonna finish this draft so i have a 2472 build going i'm gonna i'm gonna draft a shitty saints wide receiver with my last pick yeah which gives me one more pick don't need a tight end probably a running back yeah i think i could go like a yeah i think i go with a running back Oh, these guys, do you, I can't, I'm not drafting Mark Ingram on an anchor RB build. I'd maybe do Mark Ingram if it was like a zero RB build. Probably just draft my guy, Eno Benjamin for the millionth time. I mean, if, if you millions, got I mean, three that's... starts out of Ingram on a suspended Kamara, that's pretty sweet. How much Kamara do you have? Mm, uh, not, I think I'm at like six or 7%. Well, it's, yeah. Yeah. Did I, did I finish that thought when we were talking about the balance stuff? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think I did. So, like, Kamara's another one, you know? It's too bad it's Ingram. Like, if they had Latavius Murray still or somebody like that. I know. Like, then you then you can use that that balance idea and, and really minimize your risk without losing any EV. Maybe maybe I just do my thing where I uh, continue to draft Dearness Johnson and trust that he gets traded to the Saints, which would be just an absolute beautiful spot for him. Oh wow! Let's let's try to bank it. I'm gonna try to bank it. Dearness wow. Johnson to the Saints one time. Thirteen percent Dearness Johnson for this guy. You want to talk <laughs> big astrology? Brain. Astrology? You correlate before he gets on the team. Easy, I'm telling you right now, Kamara is not getting suspended this year. Ain't gonna happen. Um, yeah, Shorty says, old. Brian, I saw you were in the NASCAR streets last week. How did that go? You in the NASCAR? Yeah, streets? busted out the old NASCAR sim, dusted it off, got my yeah. ass kicked. Uh, it's just like every time I play NASCAR, I'm in first. And then I go back and look and like, oh, your first place drivers just crashed. And it's like, why do I do this? Why do I play this dumb fucking? It's the worst sweat. NASCAR is the worst sweat in DFS. Um, I don't know. But I like my I like my sim. So occasionally when I'm not doing anything on Sunday, I'll probably do it I this forgot. weekend. No, wait. I'm going to be hungover because I'm golfing on Saturday. Ooh. Probably no NASCAR this week. Um, I forgot I had an extra pick for some reason. I thought I only had two more picks left. Um, oh my god, that's like you're basically guaranteed to win the whole thing now. I know you have an it's extra because pick. I showed 
showed so much patience. I'm going to get another wide receiver. Which wide receiver should I take? Someone off the board who doesn't get drafted a lot. You know what we're going to do? Hmm. We're going to do uh, we're going to do Quez Watkins, a little bring back with this Saints stuff here. All right. Quez having a good camp. That's a question I wanted to ask you or the chat is uh, how far down should we go for these like rankings? Mm. Cause I did top 300, but it seems like a lot of those aren't really needed. And the, the less amount of guys you populate, the faster all these APIs and shit work. It's not a big deal, but like if I clip off 50 or something, it'll, it'll load a little faster. Mm hmm. And Keel Henry's in the top 300, for example. So, like, he might drop out if we clip off the top 50. Yeah, I feel like 300 is a, is a good, good number. Yeah, yeah, we'll leave it. Yeah. Unless it unless it's slowing things down, then. And did we mention we have the um, PGA oh, yeah. um, rankings? We'll, we'll do that really quick after this is over, maybe. We'll just show. Yeah. Well, we're, we got we're the... Who you, who you drafting here? Same also, same. easy pointed out. I normally do the uh, the first thing. You can type in the full mascot, uh, yeah, and then get just that. Um, we yeah, a so lot I'm, of good info here. All right, I'm gonna put Callaway, Hardy, Traquan. I dare this room to clear my queue as we head to the lobby uh, here <laughs> too. Um, so you could just go to the rankings page again um, if you want to look at, and then PGA. Yeah. And then you can see it's got nothing, but then if Pete goes over to the settings on the app and uh, selects um, f the fantasy golf bag. For? Um, um, does it matter? Any of them? Yeah. Call yeah, and yeah. So, yeah, there's a new update, too, that'll have another one. But if you go back to it and uh, – oh, did that refresh it? The, the rankings page again on PGA, it should show up without having to enter – anything oh there it is yeah and so uh sebastian munoz might have another name thing going on there but he probably has an enya in his name i would imagine maybe somewhere <laughs> it's these are the happened. fantasy bag this is reddit cheeks rankings for this contest reddit cheeks yeah and uh i think he won a millie i think he won a golf millie red cheek on twitter and fantasygolfbag.com is their website so they give us their rankings and their projections and it's it's free if I mean if you have the app, anyways. It would appear so, uh, that was, Ryan Harmon is being overdrafted. Yeah, well, you know, um, there are a lot of people who like Harmon this week. I think. I mean, because I I I I, have, I did my PGA and I have a lot of them. So <laughs> I might disagree with you here, but but definitely Sung JM for sure is mispriced here. So he has him ranked third, and they have him. What is that? I don't know, tenth or something like that. So, like, I know with his win odds and stuff, he should be, like, yeah, like, three is probably about right. So you could just reset these rankings to match his or add him a little bit, and you don't even have to draft because there's no correl there's no weather tomorrow. There's no weather issues. Oh, Unless you're saying change. this would be the perfect contest to just autopilot because you don't have to worry about any structure or correlation. Yeah, and no one's even doing this much work, I bet. I bet or maybe mm -hmm. I'm sure a couple guys are. And then just – re-rank them exactly one two go down to three four yep um you know and you only need to rank like 30 guys or something right don't dupe me bros <laughs> and then i you know enter three just auto pick yeah this is actually i'll probably do that later and then uh, I would just check back in on your exposures and make sure you don't have like 100% of guys. Right. Yeah, because you might end up with who was the guy that was really low down. Was it Kim? Sung JM. Yeah. You might end up with a, yeah. with a ton Him, of Him, I would mind. I'd still probably try to keep it to like 75%. I don't know. Right. I guess you can. Can you? Oh, yeah. The key. So the, I'm an idiot. Don't do this one by one. Just put these just guys all, all in. And then it has, has it. Me being the. Uh, the donkey boy here trying to go for them. See, one. Yeah. Drew Kim down there. Joe Kim. He's been, he's been pretty fucking hot. There you go. Um, sweet. Yeah. And then you, once you're here, then you can just, uh, drag slide drag. these around as, as you need. Mm -hmm. And just make sure you save it too. Right. Cool. 
Very cool. Um, and what, I guess you'd probably put this out if you had someone that, uh, want to do baseball stuff or if it, you, you want to put that out there, if people are interested yeah. in rankings for other sports, we don't want to do content. <laughs> we want to like facilitate content creators and just make it easy for people to utilize those tools. Mm-hmm. So if you have an API and you, and you charge people, like we can work something there where we just ping your site, make sure they have a subscription or if you want to just get your name out there and, uh, you know, get me your info, I'll put it up for the users. There you go. Um, what, what, we have the hockey's coming soon, too. Right now, the NHL has no um, data on, on best ball, but I think it's supposed to be up like a week or two. And we have someone who's provided us some, some of those. You know what I'd like is some good – Although it doesn't seem like anyone cares. NFL season long projections, like stat projections. Mm. Like, I don't know. I kind of like uh, we have I have some up there, but they're 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 I haven't updated them in a little while. But uh, I don't know. I kind of like looking at oh, this guy's projected to have a hundred more fantasy points than this guy. Like right. Even though you know, I don't know. You know, like Daniel Jones is kind of like that type of guy. It's like, wow, you know, he's actually projected pretty pretty decently for this late. Yeah. Uh, Josh says we want MMA best ball. I don't even know how that would work, but that I guess that could be kind of fun. Yeah. Do, do you like, I mean, it would be the same thing as golf. True. I mean, I imagine the ties would be, I guess hmm, you just start taking like clearly not the first best player. Just take right. somebody and just so you don't do. Yeah. I think that actually might be kind of fun just because yeah. of how binary the outcomes are there. Mm-hmm. Um, That's interesting. Right. I bet guys go. would take dues due to our playing against each other too. For sure. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. I got to run. Um, if you guys have more questions about the draft caddy, feel free to ping Brian in his discord or on the Lulz channel and the deposit kingdom discord. Just feel free to, uh, to tag him and uh, anything else here before we go, Brian. PGA DFS ownerships up on my site too. If anyone wants, wants it, it's free. There you go. Um, sounds good guys. I believe we've been cooking up some stuff maybe for a show next week. Yeah. Um, do you, do you want we'll to see anything with that now or we'll, we'll play it. No, soon. let's, let's wait till next week. But yeah, I think we're going to have maybe a couple guests next week. Um, and we had, this is audio too, for the, anyone who does, who doesn't know we've been getting a decent amount of, pod downloads but if you don't know i'm gonna put it up on all the podcatchers here after the show so please uh sub to those podcatchers yeah maybe we'll maybe we'll do some kind of itunes rating uh giveaway in yeah. the future get you guys some lols swag i still need to put a lols tank top up in the store so maybe we'll do that um actually do that if you leave an itunes if you haven't le- left an itunes review or you've already left an itunes review um, send us a screenshot, tag me, tag me in the discord. Maybe I'll make a thread within the Lulz channel and then yeah. you can post your screenshots and anyone who posts a screenshot in there, I will put your name on a wheel for, for Lulz merch. We'll do like a $25 gift card. You can get a hat, you can get a tank that I will put up. So there you go. That is your mission. Should you choose to accept it? For Brian, I'm Pete. Good luck perfectly balancing your exposure so you don't have more than 8.3% of a player. We'll see you next week.